rare and balanced view on politics in today's world. Based on facts, born of rationality, common sense, and logic. Providing context on today's events, this is American Perspective with Rick Thomas. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the number one liquid-fueled, liquid-lubricated show on the interwebs. This is American Perspective with me, Rick Thomas. That's right. Okay, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I am I am fairly certain I am going to piss off at least one person <laughs> who is watching tonight. Um, I'm, I'm fairly certain. I don't know that 100%. For sure. But um, yeah, we'll get into it and we'll see what happens. <laughs> anyway, um, obviously, before I get into everything, first of all, I got to give a shout out to everyone. I do see um, Becky and um, Tommy over and Mark just popped in over on um, Facebook. Those are my three typical ones um, that are over there and chatting. So hello to all of you. And of course, over on rumble, I have, uh, Redford, buddy, wiser, jarhead, three Chevy, um, Bonnie, uh, let's see. Outlaw dogs. Can't forget her. Uh, daybreak is also in the chat as well. Let me see who else is here that I might've missed. Um, uh, Nana, of uh jjs is there as well um let me see bam is in there as well um so hey uh you know there's this wonderful feature oh there's mama five kitties too um there's this uh wonderful feature that uh that i hardly ever use just really quickly and it is to look at how many people are actually watching on um rumble and right now it looks like uh, I've got about 33 people that are watching, but I know there's not that many in the chat. So if you are watching and you feel like you would like to join in on the chat, I know you can see it. Um, you know, make sure you sign in and then you can hop into the chat and converse with your fellow um, whiskey warriors. Actually, might as well throw that out there. Um, because that's who you guys are. All right. Oh, I guess it's 36 now. Oh, judge just popped in. Um, I see. So welcome, welcome, welcome all of you. And once again, yes, I am going to tell you, I, I have a feeling I am going to piss off at least one of you tonight. <laughs> it's not, it's not on purpose. I swear it's not on purpose, but before I get into real trouble for not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, let's go ahead and get the first, um, order of business out of the way ladies and gentlemen join in with me please stand remove your hats and let's go ahead and recite the pledge of allegiance i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you for that. And, uh, you happen, you should notice that that was, um, that that was me saying it because I don't have anybody in the queue. So if you want to send your audio of reading the pledge of allegiance or reciting the pledge of allegiance to me, um, that would be fantastic. You can do that by sending it, sending me the audio file. I don't care what it's in. I mean, I can, I can pretty much convert whatever, um, but email it to me to at fans at whiskey mu, uh, sorry, not whiskey music, <laughs> American perspective dot online. Once again, that's fans F A N S at American perspective dot online. I fell into a little bit of um, uh, muscle memory there <laughs> for that. But yeah, fans, F-A-N-S at American Perspective dot online um, for that. And I would do, I, I would definitely really appreciate it um, for that. Um, so send it off to me. And of course, we do that every show. So you, uh, you'll get it up right away, real quick, real quick, right away. All right. Tonight, Bonnie is going to be happy with me because I am drinking Four Roses 
Kentucky bourbon tonight in my fantastic True Grit Roots Network American themed tumbler, rocks glass, whatever, old fashioned glass, whatever you want to call it. I know it goes by several different names. Um, and I have the uh, stones, the whiskey stones in the bottom, of course. Mm. That's good stuff. That is good stuff. So there we go. All right. And speaking of True Grit Roots Network, I got to tell you about them. So True Grit Roots Network is proud to present and produce a new a um, live show coming to Gainesville, Texas, called The Outlaws. Come to Gainesville Saturday, April 20th at Bare Bones Barbecue. Presented and produced, of course, by True Grit Roots Network, TGRN. Billy Stoops and the Dirty Angels and Dallas Moore bring their roots rockin' and outlaw country shows to the Boneyard at Bare Bones Barbecue for one night only. And that is, again, Saturday, April 20th at 8 p.m., Billy Stoops and Dallas Moore are multi-award winning artists who bring their songs and stories to the stage that will bring you to your feet all night long. Tickets and information can be found at TGRN.net. That's TGRN.net. And uh, yeah, you should also check out our radio station that's played 24 by 7. It's Blues all blues at least right now that's the channel that we have up all blues all the time you can find that at tgrn.net as well and of course full disclosure i am part owner in that organization all right i have a fantastic um pet of the week this week we have an update on some kitties that showed up in the pet of the week early after they were first um acquired let's say um but, uh, but yeah, so it's going to be coming up at the end of the program. That will be, um, of course our pet of the week and I missed it, but tonight is whiskey Wednesday. It's like taco Tuesday, but for badasses. <laughs> I like doing that. That's the, I like to try and get, you know, my vocal cords, a little bit of exercise. And so and kind of gives me, all right. So we had some, um, fantastic. Well, I mean, I don't know if you necessarily call it fantastic, but we had an an announcement by um, Trump early this week, and it has literally caused the left to go um, ape crap, not just over that announcement, but of course, right following on, um, right following on that was a, um, an announcement by the Arizona state um, Supreme court that basically said that they were going to, um, <laughs> that they were going to keep an 1864 law. Now, for those of you that don't know that 1864 law predates them being actually <laughs> a state. Um, and of course, all of that has, uh, essentially ignited the left. And of course, you know, me being the wonderful individual that I am, especially on the social media stations, particularly X, um, they, I, I saw, I saw a, what would I, what I considered a very incredibly stupid post. And I just had to give my two cents, which of course netted me, um, eh, what I would consider as a few hundred dollars back. <laughs> Uh, considering it now I'm laughing. I'm not, I'm not laughing at the subject. Keep that in mind. I am laughing at the fact that there's two things that I found that the left incredibly, okay, will automatically jump on. And for some reason, yours truly managed to find a way to tie them both together. Yeah, I managed to find a way to tie them both together, which of course means that I hit essentially two hornet's nests in one and um, started a cascade. Now, by cascade, I'm serious. I posted this or I posted my response, I don't know, roughly two hours ago. 
and it's still going. I still have people arguing, not only me, but arguing against others that jumped in as well. So these two topics that really seem to piss off the left, I mean, obviously anything you say about Trump, that immediately pisses off the left. Anything that you say about Trump, you could even just say that, you know, my gosh, Trump had good hair today. And that would be enough to have all of the lefty lunatics crawl out of the woodwork and come after you. Um, but the particular two, two, two particular topics had to deal with abortion. And in my case, I added gun control to the, to the situation. Now I'm going to paraphrase this. If you have an X account and you follow me, I'm sure you can find what I'm discussing and what I'm talking about here. But there was an individual who essentially stated roughly um, that men themselves should have, should not be at the table when discussing abortion. And I responded back and just basically said that, well, somebody that doesn't own a gun shouldn't have a seat at the table when discussing gun control. And I added to that while one is, you know, a constitutional, um, constitutionally protected right, the other one is not, and therefore falls to the Second Amendment. Now, um, the, the interesting thing about this, and again, keep in mind, Trump put out what is the politically correct statement for someone who is running for president. He actually took the moderate stance. Okay. He took the moderate stance. And that is that literally the federal government has no business in abortion. Now, for those of you who watch this program and actually read the constitution and can understand the constitution as well. Okay. Healthcare itself is not in the Constitution. As a federally mandated responsibility of the federal government. Okay. Now, again, anything that the federal government is supposed to be doing is all contained within Article 1, Section 8. You want to know what the federal government is supposed to be doing and by omission of things on that list, what the federal government is not supposed to be doing, all you have to do is read Article 1, Section 8. That's it. That's, that is literally what Congress is supposed to be doing and what um, the federal government is responsible for. Now, that being said, there is an amendment. It is at the very bottom of the Bill of Rights. It is called the Tenth Amendment. And I have explained on multiple occasions, and I've even brought it up on multiple occasions on this program, that the Tenth Amendment, in my view, is the most underused amendment of the entire um, set of amendments that we call the Bill of Rights. Now, to be fair, the Ninth, right above it, also has a very similar tone to it than what the Tenth is. But the Tenth succinctly states... And I'm going to paraphrase because I don't know the phrasing exactly, but that's pretty damn close. That if anything that does not appear in the Constitution itself as a responsibility of the federal government or that appears in the Constitution as a specific thing that the states cannot do, then the states and the people are the individuals responsible for that, whatever that is. Now, the Ninth Amendment basically states that not all rights are enumerated in here, which that kind of goes without saying, okay? But regardless, even though the Ninth says not all the rights are enumerated here, essentially, the Tenth basically says, well, if they're not enumerated in here, nor specifically prohibited by the Constitution to be a state's job, it is the state's job. And that, my friends, is my stance from the standpoint of the federal government being involved in abortion. Now, notice 
that I'm essentially saying that the federal government itself, okay, can't get involved, but that doesn't mean that the states can't. And so here is where federalism, and this is, the, this is the true nature of our government. Our government is called a republic, but it is grounded in federalism, okay? And here's part of the problem, is that the left, especially now that, that Trump has decided to take essentially what is the moderate stance on a federal um, abortion law, either way, Either way, doesn't matter whether you want it as a full blockade or fully um, allowed. You have to understand that the federal government, from a constitutional perspective, has no business in it. And therefore, well, there are a few exceptions. I mean, we could go into some nuances like on federal grounds and things like that. But in general, for the general American public, the federal government has no business being in the state's businesses of abortion. And this stance, every time I bring it out and every time I bring it up, and believe me, my Senator Patty Murray, my wonderful senator, has a like a a rotation in her Rolodex where she has like five key things that she talks about on X and abortion happens to be number five and it kind of rolls over and uh, yeah, it does all kinds of things, okay? Um, but but the thing about it is, is that that is literally the legal definition and the legal stance and the moderate stance of doing it. Now, whether I believe in abortion itself and whether you believe in abortion itself doesn't matter. And this is part of the rub is that that part doesn't matter. What does matter is what's written in the Constitution. Now, you can argue the whole moralistic, um, you know, avenue, which, honestly, I believe it's morally wrong. However, I understand that there are times where you may have to be in the unenviable, I can't even say that, uh, the envious or unenviable, uh, whatever, position... (laughs) To make to have to make the choice between a mother and a baby, okay. But the the point here is that you know that should be a decision. That should be a very rare decision. That should be something that only occurs a small percentage of the time, as it does right now, because taking running accounts, less than two percent of all abortions are being performed in cases of rape, incest, and medical emergencies. 98% of them are being done because of a lack, in my eyes, a lack of responsibility and accountability for you and your partner. And yes, I am calling out both sexes here, not just one. But both sexes here, Because the responsibility and accountability is on the two of you for going into bed together. Now, you can't sit here and tell me that the man has literally no say in this. And this is where I take serious objections to anybody. And believe me, my buddy Steven Stiles and I, this is one one particular point where he and I have a, a huge huge divide in our agreement on this or disagreement on this, which is essentially that in his mind and, you know, in most women's minds, it's like, Hey, that baby is my, you know, it's my body, my choice. Well, I'm sorry, but that baby is 50% his genetic material. So you can't sit here and tell me that you expect this guy, whoever this is to number one, participate in the act. Number two, go and support you should you as the woman decide to keep the baby maybe he doesn't want it and maybe you do and then you add to that whole concept of maybe the roles are reversed she doesn't want to keep it but he does now here's the problem with all of this assertions and all of these assumptions is the fact that there is one 
singular thing out of all of this that people are going to completely gloss over. Out of the two people, the two individuals that create that life, there is only one with the, sorry ladies, equipment and the ability given by God to be able to bring that life to fruition. And this is where, believe it or not, feminism has glossed over this. See, a lot of people seem to think that conservative men don't value women. Let me explain at least my particular conservative male views. You ladies have one singular superpower that we as men will never ever have. And that is the ability to give life. We provide a 50% of the genetic material. And God has granted you with the superpower to, again, pardon me, ladies, cook it, bake it, and turn it into, after nine months, a human child that can live and breathe outside of your body and live on its own and become an incredible, incredible, hopefully productive member of society. Now, here's the thing. Any father, I will tell you, I was, I was fortunate enough to be in the room when both of my children were born. I was fortunate enough to have not only a son, but a daughter. I have been fortunate enough to watch both of them grow into the most wonderful people that they are today. I have had the opportunity to be able to see them and, and be proud of the fact that they are going to become the productive members of society that I expect them to be. I love them both dearly, and I will tell you, I would give my life in a second for theirs in any way, shape, or form. Now, that doesn't come from just a genetic donor, okay? Now, there might be some men out there eh, who act that way. And you know what? There's going to be shitbags who do that all the time. But the reality of it is, is that it takes two to tango. And therefore, in this particular case, yes, it is the woman's body that is being changed, but that's your superpower. That's something men will never, ever have. That's something men will never be able to do. So these transgender idiots that are out there, I'm sorry, folks, biology trumps you. If you're thinking that you can have babies and stuff, I'm sorry, you can't. It's not physically possible. And at least as far as at the moment, anyway, we haven't found or discovered a medically scientific way to transplant stuff to make it work. Okay. Now, again, all of that being said, to kind of wrap around here, all of that being said has to deal with the whole idea of abortion. Okay. And abortion itself, all right, is a decision, is a moral decision. And honestly, is one that the government doesn't need to really be involved in. I, you know, I'm of the, the point that, hey, you want to make it legal? Fine. But let's make some sense out of this. Let's make some sense, some common sense, some logic, and some reason out of this. Okay. Let's, let's take a reasonable approach to this. Now, we can argue on the scientific merits 
as to when the baby is a baby, you can take a biblical view, which the biblical view generally tends to lean toward when the baby is born is when the soul comes in and the first breath is when it is a baby. But the fact of the matter is, is that science has shown us and demonstrated to us that when you take two separate strands, individually unique strands of, of DNA, and they combine to create a third distinct strand, not exactly like, but yet not completely unlike the two strands that joined, you have what is essentially called a life. And so this is where it comes down to a choice. Now, I personally, I don't agree with abortion unless there is a medical reason for it. I don't necessarily agree with the whole idea of rape and incest. However, I can completely understand when things like that occur, that there could be some medical reasons for it to, for the baby to be terminated in those cases. But outside of that, using it as a birth control method, and especially, and this is really the key part, especially having the federal government, which has no business in abortion at all, forcing me to use my taxpayer money to pay for that abortion through the donations that they make to Planned Parenthood, that's a bit of a problem. That's a bit of a problem, and that's exactly where we are today. Now, if you want to go, if you're, you know, of the mindset that the religion aspect of it, the moralistic aspect of abortion doesn't seem to bother you, well, then fine. But here's the thing, is that realistically, you have to live with someone like myself. And so we have to come to a common denominator and a common degree. And this is where the majority of Americans actually sit. The majority of Americans, regardless of what you think, actually believe that abortion should be available, but that there should be limits on it. Meaning that within the first trimester at a minimum, so that's first three months at a minimum. Okay that the first three months at a minimum is pretty, you know, pretty much open season at that point. But after that, it tends to get a little sticky. And the idea that the Democrats, especially those like Joe Biden, who are looking at doing abortion all the way up to the moment of birth, we're talking full gestational period is complete. Baby is about ready to come out. And you can all of a sudden decide as a woman, you know what? I don't want it anymore. Not saying that has happened, but I am saying there are states in, in particular, Oregon has the law that you can do that. But you can go and just kill the baby. So we need to come down to, all right, let's take a look at this. And these are some of the arguments that I've been making um, on social media is let's take a look at it from this perspective. If there is a pregnant woman, doesn't matter how far along she is, because realistically, most laws don't consider how far along someone is. If a woman is pregnant and she gets killed by somebody, or even in an accident, she gets killed. Okay? The point is, is that the individual who did it, whether it was an accident or done on purpose, has essentially committed not one, but two murders. Not one, but two murders. So in one case, you can count the baby as a human life of value and morally, morally, is an individual life. And yet, on the other hand, it's nothing but a clump of cells. At least that's what the 
left wants you to believe. That's what they are looking for. I got a little bit more on this in just a second, but first, since we are talking about the Constitution, let me tell you where you can get this constitutional information that I've been putting out, folks. I've been putting it out. You can get it by picking up your own copy of the Constitution of the United States right here. Constitution.AmericanPerspective.online. That's Constitution.AmericanPerspective.online. And what are you going to get when you go there? Well, what you're going to find is this fabulous saddleback leather-bound U.S. Constitution that can be used as a keepsake and a pass down to your kin as you move on because they have a 100 year warranty against materials and workmanship where if something does go wrong you can send it back to the manufacturer and they will either fix it or replace it for free it has fantastic and we're talking about sex here with abortion but it has sexy rounded corners the inside there are the cover i should say has an eighth of an inch of saddleback leather. The inside has tear-resistant and water-resistant pages. And the binding in here is better than, oh, I can't even think of it. But anyway, the binding goes all the way through. It is a string binding, and it goes all the way through. Believe me, this thing is built well for it, okay? This thing is built very, very well for it. Go and get your copy today by going to constitution.americanperspective.com. Dot online. But once again, that's constitution.americanperspective.online. It is buddy tested, buddy approved, Billy tasted, and Billy approved. And my youngest whiskey warrior out there has confirmed that the information within is enough to pass a civics exam in Scouts. Go and get yours today at constitution.americanperspective.online. All right, I'm being told by the chat I need to move move on from this. So guess what? I will. But hey, you know that whole concept of, um, you know, that whole concept that, you know, women are like left leaning and women are, you know, they, they don't have conservative beliefs that they are more left than anything else. Well, check this out in all right, let me get this up here. This is a, a survey that came out, um, a recent national survey by KA Consulting Group on behalf of the Claire Booth Luce Center for Conservative Women. According to the Federalist in here, um, what we see here is that most young women actually hold conservative beliefs, but they're hiding them. And the reasons why they're hiding him is because of the fact or hiding them be, is because of the fact that it's all over TikTok, X everywhere. All of these people are just, it's, it's just, they're, they're covered with leftist ideology. Okay. And, 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 you know, young women, unfortunately, especially those who happen to show up in, you know, universities and things like that, if they hold conservative views and even, even conservative men are the same way. If you go off to university, I mean, you can, uh, Sean Parnell has gone and gotten his master's degree and he was telling us on his show a while back where, you know, he, he had to like almost bite his tongue in some of his classes because they are pushing it so hard. Well, apparently there are many women out there and a lot of people are, are sitting here looking at this, but there's a lot of people out there who think in terms of the women that are out there, they're going to be the ones to sink Trump because of this whole abortion stance. And that is not necessarily the case, at least according to this study. And it looks like, uh, I, you know, you can go ahead and read it. It gives you a point to the survey. Um, it points you to the survey in there and stuff like that. But 
you know, the thing about it is, is that I'm not exactly sure that women in, as a whole are all as leftist um, as what as what the left <laughs> wants you to actually believe. All right, I'm being told to get out of this, so let's move on um, to something a little bit different. Did you guys know that Ashley Biden's diary thief was actually being tried and sentenced? Yeah, you know that whole thing? Um, you know that whole thing that, that just like the Hunter Biden laptop, the whole thing that they were talking about with the, uh, with the, the, oh, it's all Russian disinformation. It's fake news. It's fake, whatever it's blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Anyway, apparently so this, this Amy Harris and her accomplice, Jonathan Curlander pleaded guilty to a single charge of conspiracy each in August and they were sentenced. Now here's the thing how, and, and I, I've, I've used this before when it comes to the laptop. How can somebody a get sued? Number one, B uh, get sentenced for it. If the thing does not exist. Now project Veritas, which brought to light some of the information that was given to them by Amy Harris and her accomplice has put it out there and, uh, you know, shown the world pretty much some of the information. In fact, I myself have some memes that have, um, some pretty damning information about Hunter or sorry about Joe Biden, um, showering and her questioning whether or not she was molested at an early age. And that's all been running around on social medias. Um, but here we are once again, the left is trying to cover up and saying that, Hey, this thing is not hers. And yet we have somebody who now been sentenced to a month of prison, three months of home detention and three years probation. Now, the funny thing about this, well, funny as in, not in, as in humorous, but funny as in, I guess, ironic in a way is the fact that, um, the, uh, the, sentencing kind of pissed people off and they were like, well, Oh my gosh, all she got was four months in prison. That's it. Four months. Well, I mean, let's consider how she acquired it. She didn't necessarily steal it. She found it when she was going through some papers after Ashley had left. They say she stole it, but she didn't really steal it. Again, she found it. Now, um, Project Veritas, of course, still has their court case running through. Um, but, uh, but the thing about it is, is that they were essentially, um, um, the money that, that Project Veritas went ahead and paid her and Curlander $20,000. And so the judge, at least according to CNBC, said that uh, they would have to pay that amount as part of their probation. Um, Amy, of course, that was her cut of the amount that she and Curlander received from Project Veritas. Now, Project Veritas, of course, has, has said, it. yeah, you know what? We've never met him, so on and so forth, um, that kind of thing. And uh, they're, yeah, they're going to have their day in court. They're going to have they endure, their day in court for that. Um, but anyway, so now apparently the fake diary has resulted in a conviction of four months. <laughs> All right. Speaking of crime, the um, Biden administration wants you to think that crime is actually going down. Yes, they are saying that crime is going down. That I think it was something like murders are down 13% from last year in particular. Well, here's part of the problem with that. 
Okay. And I, I've mentioned this, I, I wanted to mention this in another episode, um, but I ended up having, it ended up dropping on the cutting room floor. Um, but the thing about it is, is that the crime stats are actually um, being manipulated pretty much kind of like the uh, in, uh, economy stats are being manipulated. And the reason being straight up is that when you don't arrest people or when you do arrest people, but you don't prosecute them, then you don't necessarily have to report those, at least not to the FBI. And what's even worse though, is that, and I got to scroll down here a little bit, but what's even worse though, is this. When it comes to reporting, and this is from a hot air piece that uh, is talking, talking about another, it's another piece and I'm not quite sure where it's from, but anyway, this is in the hot air piece. In 2019, 89% of municipal police departments spanning roughly 97% of the population, okay, submitted crime data to the FBI. To compensate with the um, incomplete data, the FBI goes and kind of fills in gaps using eh, inferred statistics, okay, according to this report. However, by 2021, so here we are, okay, 2019, who was president in 2019? Hmm, I seem to recall Joe Biden, or sorry, um, Donald Trump was president in 2019. We didn't get Joe Biden until 20, 2020. So here's the contrast. In 2021, less than 63% of those same departments spanning across roughly 65% of the population actually submitted crime data. Several large cities, listen to these folks, Los Angeles, New York, and Chicago all did not submit crime data at all to the FBI last year. Now, here's something to think about, okay? 13% of the murders dropped yet the three largest cities arguably in this country los angeles new york and chicago didn't submit anything and yet murders have only gone down 13 percent in fact i saw somebody that kind of broke it down for us and they said hey you know Murders are actually above 18,000 this year. Now, granted, they are a little lower than last year's numbers, but they're still up there. Now, think about that for a second. We had a little over 18,000 last year in terms of murders. The three largest cities did not bothering support it or did not bothering to submit any data. And we only came under it just a little bit. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen if they were to finally report? What's going to happen is those crime stats are going to go up. I can almost guarantee you that they are going to go up. This is crazy. I mean, it's essentially what they do with inflation, where they take inflation and they take out the things that are the most inflated right now and claim that inflation is actually dropping, even though it's still higher than when Donald Trump was in office. This is just... This is just incredible. I, I just, I, I don't even understand how these people can get away with this kind of stuff and not even think about, not even think about the fact that, again, statistically speaking, you cannot say that crime is going down when you have incomplete data. You can't compare anyone who, who has done any kind of a statistics class and I talked about this a little bit during the, um, the whole voter thing. 
But statistically speaking, you cannot sit here and compare group A with group B if there's not a common sense, not a common, a common, sorry, a, a common set of values between both and a, a full common set of values between both. I mean, this is just common sense here, folks. It's just common sense. All right. Well, um, it looks like the media are now catching up to what everybody else has already been saying. This also from the Federalist. Media tacitly admits that mail-in balloting is not as secure and reliable as they claim. That's right. Um, Of course, the corrupt media went full throttle saying, oh, yeah, mail-in balloting is, you know, perfect. Mail-in balloting. Nothing ever goes wrong with mail-in balloting at all. It's, you know, a hundred and thousand percent safe. Never produces any kind of fraud. Nope, not at all. Eh, Just a bunch of ballots that came in without signatures, without dates. Um, Yeah, all kinds of wonderful things that have happened with it. Okay, however, within this past week, here's some legacy publications that have released some stories that may not line up with that viewpoint. On Saturday, NBC News published an article raising alarm bells about the effect postal deliveries could have on mail-in balloting or mail-in voting during 2024's coming election. Hmm. The outlet itself cited recent remarks from Representative Sylvia Garcia in Texas who expressed concern that the ongoing problem could have repercussions for the country's fall elections. Now, just so people understand my, um, uh, I I've had letters sent to me that have taken, you know, like almost two weeks to get to me. And they usually would only take like four days, but you're sitting here saying that these, these ballots can't arrive late that mail-in balloting is fantastic. But that's just one issue. CBS itself further discovered that the Postal Service has failed to take necessary steps to secure millions of universal, quote, arrow keys that open bulk mailboxes in apartment buildings and neighborhoods coast to coast. Huh. So... Wait, there are people who have keys to the mailboxes to open them up so that they can pull out the mail? Hmm. According to this same report, a CBS News review reviewed thousands of pages of audits, court records, and agency documents obtained under Freedom of Information Act, and they show postal workers and supervisors not tracking the keys, not locking them up, and what's even more important, not reporting them missing. Also, uh, assault and robbery against postal workers has increased year over year since 2014, according to the Postal Investigation Service or Inspection Service. Yeah, mail-in balloting is going to be extremely safe, extremely effective, um, extremely secure. Yeah. In fact, it was so bad that the CISA, Cybersecurity Infrastructure and Security Agency, secretly admitted ahead of 2020, which I think I talked about this, um, that instead of disclosing these issues to the American public, the federal sub-agency flagged online posts highlighting all of these problems and sent them off to big tech for censorship. That's how our government handles this issue yeah mail-in balloting here in washington that's all we have we've been doing mail-in balloting for years now i personally drive down to my local ballot box which is right out in front of my um 
uh, county seat and I put it in that box. But hundreds of thousands of people, I'm sure, just mail it back in. And this is part of the problem. This is part of the problem. They want to secure elections. They want security for this. There's only one way to do it, folks. And that literally is voter ID, single day, paper ballot. That's it. It's a wonderful little three-step plan. Now, I personally would add to that whole voter ID thing as literally it has to be a U.S. passport, but I digress from, I mean, I, I throw that out there only because of the fact that states like Washington State, when you go in and get your driver's license, which they'll hand it out to anybody who can pass the test, they auto-register you to vote. So this is part of the reason why I don't think the, especially for federal elections, that the passport should be the only accepted um, ID. Now, that being said, that means that the federal government have to, has to actually issue the passport to you at no charge. I'm okay with that. We spend billions of dollars on other things anyway. But, you know, again, I... <laughs> This is, to me, this is the only way that we are going to be able to secure our elections. Make sure that these things are secure. 100%. Uh, Okay. All right. So, speaking of numbers... I was just talking about numbers. I kind of got the, in terms of the crime stats, I might've got those out of order. Didn't mean to, but, um, but here's the thing, you know, Biden's been talking about Biden inflation. Well, they actually kind of tanked that they no longer talk about it anymore. Um, because of the fact that, Hey, guess what? <laughs> inflation actually rose in March. This from the Washington examiner. Um, <laughs> Sorry, back to, I got to, I got to put this up there. Sorry, Becky, I'm going to throw you out there. Uh, Becky over on Facebook says, I thought black Americans have trouble getting photo ID. Yeah. Ari Wiseman, I think is his name. He kind of debunked that by walking through um, Harlem and like asking a bunch of people. (sighs) Anyway. (laughs) Oh, it's just horrible. Anyway. um, Okay. So, so let's go. Back to the inflation. Inflation itself rose in 3.5% in March. Now, I talked about this before, how the Fed is not planning on doing anything, um, how the Fed is not going to do anything with um, rates right now. Uh, And in fact, I saw a post from somebody on X, because again, I just love hanging out on X. That's facetious. Um, But uh, I saw a post from somebody that now they're looking at the interest rate of somewhere around 34.5% for a credit card. Wow. Um, Yeah. So roughly a third or well, yeah, roughly a third of every payment that you make every month goes directly to interest for that guy. If you decide to take it, (laughs) but anyway, inflation has risen and so the, <clears throat> the Fed, which originally said that they were going to, um, you know, not raise rates. Well, now they're definitely not going to raise rate or, or lower rates, um, but they might go up and, um, you know, raise them. They might raise them. And this is not going to be good for Biden. So while the Democrats are like betting on the abortion issue, as being the de facto um, uh, tipper of the scale, let's say, my assumption and actuality thinking is that things like inflation and the economy and the immigrants are going to be the kicker. And what's even better, uh, better as in better in quotes, okay, what's even better is the fact that the new number 
where most people are comfortable in retiring, and I'm not talking about age, I'm talking about the amount of money that you may or may not have in order to retire has come out. And in reflection of, of course, Biden's wonderful um, economy, according to this piece in Fox Business, um, Americans are now saying that the magic number to retire comfortably hits an all-time high. And this is a new all-time high, by the way, not just, well, I mean, I would assume it would be new. But anyway, according to this uh, piece, it's and it's a new study that was published by Northwestern Mutual, found the magic number that Americans believe they need in order to retire comfortably. Get this number, folks. Get this number. million this year. And that is the highest level on record. It represents nearly a 15% jump in in the 1.27 million that Americans said they needed last year in 2023. Folks, 1.46 1.46 million in order to be able to retire. I'm going to tell you that redneck retirement plan known as the lottery looks so much better to me every single time. But I can tell you this much right now, 1.46 million to where people are comfortable. I've pretty much, I've thrown that to the wind. If I don't win the lottery, or like all of a sudden making like a crap ton of money off of stuff like this. And I'm going to be working. I'm pretty much, I've, I've decided and have it in my brain that I will be working up until the point that they send me to the freaking oven to cook me after I die. I'll still even be working when I'm dead. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's pretty much, Oh, pretty much how it's going to go. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's what they, they a redneck retirement plan. That's the lottery. <laughs> anyway, I'll be I'll pretty much be working. I'm not I'm not going anywhere, folks. I'm not going anywhere. Even if this thing kicks off, I'm still not going anywhere. Not going any places. Money, money, money. I mean, there's just no way. And they sit here and now here's the thing that's that's just absolutely absurd to me. Is when you see a report like that coming out, okay? <clears throat> Sorry about that. When you see a report like that coming out and yet they are trying to fight the Democrats in particular are trying to fight the idea of raising the age for social security. Now let's not even go down the path. I mean, well, we're going to have to let's go down the path with the idea that first of all, social security itself is going to be insolvent within, you know, probably like five or 10 years but what's even worse is the fact that um is the fact that you've got these kinds of thoughts there's no way that somebody can quote unquote retire comfortably i don't know of anyone who has 1.46 million in any kind of an account anywhere hell the majority of americans right now are living paycheck to paycheck or in other words direct deposit to direct deposit There's no freaking way that this is going to happen. You have to be able to, unless you, I don't know. Honestly, I don't, I, I just don't understand it. They have got to do something. We're in a situation right now, economically speaking, we are in an emergency situation and I don't know what they're going to be able to do with all of this. I really, really don't. And here we have the cost. I mean, inflation, people are like, ah, 3.5 is not bad. Well, 3.5 is a year over year. I'm going to take you through it again. I know all of my whiskey warriors know this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. Inflation is like compounding interest. Only in this case, it is hurting you, not helping you. It is the raise in prices and the devaluation of the dollar on a year over year basis. Now, 
what's already baked into the cake is roughly around 2%. They expect a 2% rise every single year. And if it goes under that, then we're good. Okay. But the fact of the matter is, is that 3.5% is over, you know, roughly uh, 50% higher than what it's supposed to be. 75% higher than what it's supposed to be. And this is the thing that we are going to have problems with. And this whole idea that, oh, inflation, and keep in mind too, that 3.5 is taking out the most important numbers like food, housing, and fuel. I just. I I just don't get it. I just don't understand it. Speaking of retiring and money. Yes, this is a fantastic one of my wonderful segues. Do me a favor and run on over to the American Perspective store. That's right. Store.americanperspective.online. Go and check out my um, clothing line with my logo all over it, as well as, um, my, my, uh, water bottles and, uh, coffee cups. I love coffee. I like drinking coffee. I would love to get a coffee, uh, sponsor by the way, too. That would be awesome as well. But anyway, head on over to, um, store.americanperspective.online and pick you guys up something wonderful. In fact, speaking about that, I received a picture, which I will be showing you in a little bit of two people who uh, have my Whiskey Warrior, my old Whiskey Warrior shirts. Uh, Anyway, Um, yeah, so head on over to store.americanperspective.online and check out my store. Pick yourself something up and, of course, um, support the show in the process. Uh, Gotta love my, my just absolute horrible segues here. Horrible segues. All right. So speaking of costs, here's something, you know, all those wonderful illegal aliens that we have running across our border, you know, those wonderful things that, you know, they keep talking about, Oh yeah. You know, the almost 10 million illegal aliens that we have within our country right now that Biden has just let in 100%. And that all of that is on the government. It's on the government. You know, the government is spending all that money. Well, guess what? Look at this piece from the Epic Times, folks. Illegal immigrant immigration, illegal aliens, costs American households hundreds of billions annually. Hundreds of billions annually. Now, this is a commentary piece, but... This is essentially estimates that are suggesting that illegal aliens cost each household about $1,000, adding up to more than $120 billion a year. Now, that $1,000 is is, um, in taxes and the money that's being spent out. Now, sources such as Newsweek also hint that the true cost could actually be higher than that. Um, possibly reaching 150 billion annually. It's an, an amount. It actually is an amount shared by both federal and state governments. And as you've seen in, in the news reports, New York is like busting at the seams. They're saying that they can't afford any more illegal aliens in their group. Um, and of course, this is getting worse and worse by the day. So that's just what they have right now, estimates that they have right now. But you got to remember, you know, the situation down on the border, the southern border, we haven't even talked about what's going on across the northern border, but the southern border along the, you know, Mexican side, 31% spike in um, uh, crossings in November of 2023, 13% surge from November of 2022. I mean, this is there. I've seen estimates between 7.2 all the way up to 10 million. Yeah. 
folks, this is, and, and it's not just the, it's not just the, um, the illegal aliens that are causing all kinds of issues, which by the way, I think I saw an article. I didn't put it in here, but it ran, it just ran across my mind. Apparently DC is not like ticketing illegal aliens when they're driving their cars for not having a license or having insurance. DC is just like letting them go. I mean, seriously? If you so what you're telling me is that if you're an illegal alien and you have a car and you go into DC and you get pulled over or whatever, you're you you're not going to get a ticket? I mean, what happens if that same illegal alien smashes into somebody else? They're probably not even I mean, the insurance company or the person they hit is going to take that up because they're uninsured. It's just, this is just enormously bad, folks. This is horrible. We have heightened crime rates because of them. Um, suppressed wages due, the de- to, due to the depletion of taxpayer resources. In other words, we're spending so much money. And yet, and tapping into uh, social welfare programs, not to mention the fact that all of these same individuals are enrolling their kids in public schools and they're not providing or, or adding to the, to, the, to the donor roles. I mean, all of this stuff adds up and it goes directly to Americans who are paying into the system. This is why... Illegal aliens cost so much money in American households on an annual basis. I mean, this is horrible. It's not, I mean, it's not, again, it's not just the fact that all of these people are coming. Okay. It's the fact and not the fact that they're here, even though that's bad enough. But even like the jobs report that was put out, um, jobs report, showed that zero manufacturing jobs were actually created. Um, It also showed that, you know, the majority of the new jobs were part-time jobs. Half of them went to illegals and not Americans. We're paying all of their stuff. I mean, what, what do they think these people, I mean, these people show up, they go into emergency rooms for healthcare Whether it matters, whether they have an emergency or not, it's because of the fact they don't have insurance. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't give them that health care, but where do these people think the money is coming from? Just like the whole student loan bailout thing, the money, the debt doesn't just disappear. You can't just sit here and like wave a wand and get rid of debt. It's not possible. It has to go somewhere whether it's on the person who owed the debt or the, the person who loaned the money and their loss. That's essentially what's going on here. Anyway, all right. So let me go ahead and before I finish off with a couple other things here, this one is... Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, where is it? There it is. Okay. So let's go ahead and do our wonderful, we got to have some lighter, lighter stuff going on here, folks. I'm just getting frustrated here, but here we go. And this week's pet of the week was, um, provided by our very own bam over on rumble. Um, for those of you that recall, she put these kitties and I'll show you here in just a second. Um, she went ahead and put these kitties in a while ago, but now they've kind of grown up a little bit. And so she's giving us a bit of an update on this. Here's the two kitties. Uh, and these two are Buck and Lucy. They turned one in January. So let me go ahead and scoot these over. Here's another picture of them when they yeah, shortly after they got them. Okay. And here they are. They're getting a little bit bigger. They're getting bigger. Do I need to make that bigger? Let's see. Can I make that bigger? Oh, shoot. Hang on just a second. 
uh, blame the guy, the guy who has the computer problems or the computer job. <laughs> hey, uh, I run everything. I would love to like, you know, there we go. Um, I would love to have a producer and blame them, but unfortunately, um, the budget won't allow it. So, uh, where were we? Oh, um, no, stop. Okay. So where were we? So they turned one in January. Buck is the more orange one. Um, just as a reminder, and Lucy has the white chest. So I think Buck is back, has his back facing to us and Lucy is, is, um, up facing us with her tummy. I'm right. And, uh, Bam could probably correct me if I'm wrong, but anyway, so there we go. Um, all right. So here they're just kind of playing and, uh, playing around, of course. Now, Lucy is also called Lulu. Um, just because I guess Lulu's easier to say than Lucy. Uh, anyway, <laughs> but here's, uh, here's Lulu on a chair doing what cats do, trying to reach something. Don't know what, probably something that caught their attention. And here's Lucy again, Lucy, Lulu, Lucy, Lou, she can be Lucy Lou. Um, but anyway. Now, these two are, one of them is um, Ruby. Ruby is the dog, the black dog in the picture here. And um, Ruby's kind of, well, I don't know if this is the pick. Um, this might not be, is this 12? I can't tell. This is six. So let me see. What is six? Ah, Lulu and Ruby are the girls. They're very ladylike, she says. I got lost. Um, very ladylike, she says. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're very ladylike. They don't keep their legs together. <clears throat> yeah, we'll leave that one alone. Um, moving on. So, um, here we go. This one is number seven and number seven is seven. Doesn't really show anything. I might be missing it in the script here, but anyway, there's some more. Oh, here they are at Christmas helping to wrap papers. And of course, just like all dog or sorry, all cats, they got to get in the boxes. Got to get in the boxes. <laughs> hmm, all right. Yeah, we've got a cat like that. Okay, and here's Lucy once again, just kind of hanging out on the chair. Boy, there's a lot of pictures of Lucy. Is uh, is Buck like camera shy? Because I know my my dog can be camera shy. Oh, there's Buck. Took long enough, and Buck's doing what you know guys usually do: just napping on the couch <laughs> or the chair. I guess this is a chair. I don't know. Could be a could be a couch. All right. So here we are, number twelve. So this one is of Ruby and Ruby. Look at her cute little sweater. Ruby apparently doesn't like. Um, she gets very serious about her bones, as I think a lot of dogs do, and so she's kind of growling at both Buck and Lucy in this picture here. Um, Kind of saying, leave my bones alone, leave my bone alone, which is pretty cool. I mean, just the fact that she's, that they're actually able to kind of live together, cats and dogs together. That's, that's cool. Um, yeah, they're just kind of wondering, according to what Bam sent in is that they're just kind of wondering what the big fuss is about with why, you know, why is Ruby growling at them? They're just like, well, what the hell? We're not interested in your damn bone. All right. Um, let's see here. Oh, and there's Lucy again on the couch. Yeah, like I said, Buck must be camera shy. Oh, unless Buck is just hanging out in the tree. You know, cats do this all the time. Cats do this all the time. Yeah. They're hanging underneath our cat, um, Cleo, you guys have seen her, um, hangs out underneath the tree. Haven't gotten Badger to do that yet, but, but Cleo definitely does. And here we go. So this is Bam's daughter Z, which we haven't seen her in a while. I don't know if she's in chat. Oh yeah, there she is. 
And of course her, um, I'm going to call a significant other. Nope. Boyfriend. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what the categorization is here, but, um, this is Z and D and Z and D are sporting my old whiskey musings logo shirts. Thank you very much for posing for the photograph. That is awesome. I do appreciate getting you guys getting the shirts and of course showing the colors. I should get uh, some American perspective logoed ones as well. <clears throat> Just saying. Um, but that being said, if you still want to get the whiskey musings logo shirts or my saying, my motto of when I drink, I think you can head on over to store.whiskeymusings.online. It's still on there. Oh, and I guess I was right. It is boyfriend. I just, I, I got to check because you know, I've, I've been, I have a 17 year old daughter and I've been told that because of my age, I am like completely out of touch with, with today's youth and how they refer to one another, whether or not they're dating or whether or not they're boyfriend and girlfriend or whether or not they're, you know, whatever. And so, yeah, I'm just saying I try to tread lightly. (laughs) Oh, so anyway, so that's the last photo. Thank you very much. Um, bam for sending us that update on, um, well, pretty much the entire family for the most part, Ruby and Buck and Lulu. And of course Z and D. So that is fantastic. Thank you very much. Hey, if you want to get your animal, your pet, and believe me, we get some exotic ones, but if you want to get your animal or pet um, shown on pet of the week, head to your email, your favorite email client, whatever it is, send me photos, a description, uh, kind of what's going on. And, um, and yeah, so send that off to fans, F A N S at American perspective dot online. That's fans at American perspective dot online. And you can be featured on Wednesday's pet of the week or your pet, I should say can be featured on Wednesday's pet of the week. Um, one little note of caution with that. If you do send me photos with children and the pets together. Um, I generally don't like showing young children's um, faces. And so I will more than likely blur them out before I air them, or I may not air them at all. It sort of depends on what I can do. So, um, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of the setup. All right, let's move on. I got a couple last minute uh, articles here real quick. Um, first of all, apparently now the RNC under Laura Trump's, um, uh, direction, I guess is impressing some people. So here from PJ media, um, the new and improved RNC is zeroing in on the right priorities (laughs) right now. Not, not like right as in, yeah. Anyway. Um, so the new RNC after um, Rana McDaniel left, they apparently um, appeared. So Michael Watley and Laura Trump appeared on Maria Bartiromo's Sunday morning futures over the weekend, where they elaborated on the steps they are taking to get the country back on track by securing victory in November. The host kicked off the interview by congratulating the duo on Donald Trump's historic fundraiser, which we talked about last time, netted over $50 million, twice as much as Joe Biden's. Um, But then they asked where they would allocate those funds from the massive hall. And the, the answer was, we are going to spend every single dollar that we raise on two key critical core missions of the Republican National Committee, which is the vote, and protecting the ballot. And we're going to make sure that we are focusing on the battleground states and the districts where we need to be competitive and making sure every dollar that we raise is going to put is going to be putting lead on target. Now that's an interesting phrasing, lead on target. Um she's obviously talking about, you know, that gun control that Jarhead was talking about earlier. Um but uh but 
think about this. That is a very clear, very clear and concise mission is to make sure that the vote getting out the vote, meaning making sure that you revitalize or invigorate the base, get out the vote and then um, go and uh, make sure that you're protecting those ballots that are coming out. And so that is, that is a very clear and concise mission statement. I have to admit, you know, knowing what we went through with uh, Ronna McDaniel and the kind of listless ambivalent RNC throughout the last several years um, is kind of a, a, a refreshing change um, to be honest with you. And so we'll have to see if this continues, but apparently, I mean, just given the fact that they just trounced um, Biden's 25 million um, fundraiser in New York city, where he brought in the ringers of Obama and Clinton, just being able to trounce that with just one person is um, yeah, that's uh, that's cool. That is cool. All right. Um, just a last real quick update on some of the, cause again, you know, obviously lawsuits abound like I talked on the last program, but just kind of bring you up to speed as to what's going on with the lawsuit land. There's this piece in the federalist. And uh, there's a couple things that I uh, picked up on that wasn't really, that I wasn't really aware of. So the first one obviously is the Manhattan, New York prosecution for the NDA payment to stormy Daniels. Um, you know, that is apparently they tried to postpone it because of the or Trump's team tried to postpone it because of the um, uh, the upcoming Supreme Court case that's going to be heard next week. And they eventually um, they, they were trying to do it because of um, presidential immunity and that didn't go over well. And so the new trial is expected to start on Monday, um, April 15th. And of course, the left is celebrating this um, in terms of all that. But. Um, Fulton County, Georgia, D.A. Willis, um, in the questioning of election results, well, she actually appeared before or or submitted a brief to the um, Georgia Superior Court or Supreme Court, and um, they essentially um, they essentially uh, had she's begging. At least that's the the tone that she's begging to stay on the case. So we'll see how that's going to go. Um, But a trial date hasn't quite been set yet. Um, Although prosecutors have asked for the trial to start on August for August 5th. Um, But of course, some of that might have something to do with the um, case, uh, the um, appeal that was granted and is um, potentially going to be heard. Then we have the Southern District of Florida prosecution, um, which this one has that judge, uh, what is it, Aileen, Aileen Cannon. Um, she rejected the most recent effort of the Trump lawyers to dismiss the case. Um, and she also recently issued an order requesting that the special prosecutors and Trump's legal team submit the two versions of the proposed jury instructions, which of course kicked off Jack Smith by saying, yeah, that's not going to be the case. Um, you know, that's going to be a problem um, for that. And uh, currently, the trial is set to take place in Fort Pierce, Florida, which is probably going to be the only location that gets a, potentially gets a Trump, pro-Trump courtroom. And then, of course, we have Washington, D.C.'s prosecution of the January 6th speech. Um, which of course everybody is talking about, you know, January 6th being the insurrection. It's not, but it, that's what everybody wants or everybody on the left wants it to believe. Well, the case itself obviously is stalled. That's not really going anywhere because they're awaiting the ruling of the Supreme court on presidential immunity. Uh, and that of course is the case that they will start hearing, um, arguments on April, the week of April 22nd. 
Now, there is a possibility that the Supreme Court could issue a ruling on that uh, after they hear um, all of the arguments. They could issue a ruling as early as the end of June for that one. Um, And if it rules against President Trump, like they just completely clear out immunity, um, what you're going to end up with is a potentially a trial quickly following in July or August. And then, of course, the last one being the um, New York lawsuit by Letitia James for the, you know, fallacy of inflating his net worth. Um, Latest developments there is that President Trump actually has posted the bond, according to this piece, um, and Trump is not required to pay the four hundred and fifty four million penalty while the case is on appeal. However, um, the penalty will increase. By eleven one hundred eleven thousand nine hundred eighty four dollars per day, simply due to the um, interest on the penalty. Um, the appeals court plans to hold hearings in September, so you'll probably hear more about this in September when we're talking about uh, you know the inflation of the net worth. And so that kind of rounds out everything for the lawfare land cases, all of the cases that are out there. Um, and yeah, New York, three Chevy says New York is making millions off of Trump. Yes, they are. Um, and uh, Fannie Willis, by the way, she is under attack on a, in a lot of cases, a lot of places um, with regards to her recording of calls and her, you know, being with uh, Nathan Wade and all these other things. So I would imagine. I would imagine that um, that case is probably going to be out of all of these. That case is probably going to be the first one to fall out um, as soon as the appeals court, Georgia appeals court gets a hold of it. Um, But anyway. Um, All right, folks. So that is the end of the program. Do me a favor. If you would hit that thumbs up button on your way out, because rumble, obviously um, they, they, to keep track of that that is one of their primary ways of tracking whether or not the show the channel is good and i would appreciate that for sure um on that also if you can't hit the thumbs up button there's a reason because you haven't subscribed to rumble so make an account it's free and once you do follow the um whiskey musings or sorry <laughs> here i go again see muscle memory the american perspective channel on rumble Um, follow that as well. It's a big green button. It says follow. Um, you can pick that up also. Um, don't forget if you have a question that you would like to submit for question of the week for Saturday, I currently don't have one. So you can go ahead and submit that at fans at American perspective dot online. That's fans at American perspective dot online. You can, you know, you get it. Everything is American perspective dot online. So yeah. Go ahead um, for that. And um, <laughs> Outlaw Dogs, I think you should go back. Well, um, yeah, unfortunately, I mean, the name changed. There's, an, there's a reason for it. Um, but anyway, all right, folks, we will have, have a great rest of your week, and we will catch up with you guys on Saturday night, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern time on the American Perspective with Rick Thomas Show. Enjoy yourself, please, and come back safe. We'll see you on Saturday. Good night, everybody. The previous broadcast was produced and is owned by Active Eye Media, LLC. All rights reserved.